Business Brain, the show for entrepreneurs, episode 428 for Wednesday, March 8th, 2023. Greetings, folks, and welcome to, welcome back to Business Brain, the show where we apply our business brains to everything in our lives, our businesses, of course, but also pretty much anything else, because... Having that perspective is a good perspective, and we like it. Sponsors for this episode include a new sponsor, Notion AI. You can get a, you can try it out for free at notion.com slash businessbrain. We'll talk in a little bit about what Notion AI is, but also what Notion is and why you're going to want to check out uh, both of these things. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, still here, I'm Shannon Jean. Hey, man. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. It's uh, it, we we're recording this before I leave for a 12 day trip. I'm doing uh, nice. podcast movement in Las Vegas first this week, and then uh, next week I'll be in Austin for South by Southwest. Today has been one of those uber productive days. In fact, just the last you know the last five Love or six it. days. Well, because I have limited time, I find myself far more productive when I have deadlines, um, and when I have when I know that I have pockets of time to 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 get work done you know and it, like uh, having having a tight schedule i had meetings on the hour every hour today for like 5 hours straight including this one and uh and i, I you know i i made I, like i got a lot done in the windows between my meetings and stuff cuz i just knew i had to buckle down and and do it i couldn't couldn't get distracted there's a, there's a lesson there that's there's sure. a huge lesson there no i'm super efficient when i have deadlines yeah yeah that's yeah, good that's cool um, it's really good. We were talking pre-show about something that uh, that I dealt with last week, and I'll share my story. I think you've got a couple of stories, so we'll we'll rant a little bit up front here, and then maybe we'll we'll see if we can uh, keep ourselves from becoming too cynical as business owners. Correct. Yeah i I had a um, I we 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 get we at Backbeat Media we manage the sponsorships for lots of different podcasts. And part of that is we interface with the advertiser or their agency, depending on how it works out, uh, okay. to, to get all the stuff that the podcaster needs. You know, the, the creative you'll hear when we do ads in this show, it's us talking about it, but it's, it's, you know, sort of following some points that the sponsor wants us to hit. And then there's what they call the call to action, which says, like I just said in the beginning of the show, you know, you're going to visit notion.com slash business brain, et cetera. Right. They give us all these things. It wasn't notion, by the way, the story I'm about to tell, just so we all know it's I, I, I will. I am I am nice. not going to I am protecting the guilty parties here. <laughs> yes. Very much so. Uh, and so our, our this was an ad for a show that I don't do because we represent a bunch of shows and I'm not the host of all of them. And. The host reached out to us and said, hey, I just recorded the ad. This is Friday. The show goes live Monday. The link that they provided uh, isn't live yet. Maybe you want to let them know it's they're usually live this late in the game, you know, just three days before the ad's supposed to to launch. And so it was like, OK, so uh, Lisa on the team here, she got in touch with the sponsor's agency and said, hey, by the way, you know, it's not working. Just wanted to make sure you knew. And they came back and said, oh, the link changed. Uh, we can't use the link that we gave you. We need it to be a different one. Uh, make sure the ad is correct. And, you know, we wrote them back and said, well, the, it's already been recorded. Like the show's in the can. It's going to go live. And uh, so, you know, we'll make sure it's correct on the website, you know, all of this stuff. But the, the audio is the audio. And they're like, oh, wow, that's not good. Can you do a make good? Which is essentially, can you give us a free spot in the future for the mistake in this spot. And it's like, well, so Lisa came to me and she's like, I don't know how to respond to these people because I want to shoot <laughs> them. And, yeah. and I get that, uh, you know, um, because that's super frustrating. And, and I'll, 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 I'll share the rest of the story l l l later here, but th this is like, what were they thinking? Like, I, yeah. th this is you, we did, they did what you told them to do. This is, right. Whose mistake is this that you're asking us to pay for effectively? Craziness. Yes. Craziness. Is crazy. This is the thing that's yes. going to make you a cynic. Yeah. What's going to make and, you a cynic? I, yeah, let me tell you. So I, I have, I constantly fight this battle about cynicism because you, 
the customers that the experience that goes smooth and everything works great. You're like, Oh, that's awesome. Things are going good. But it, it seems to stick out as the ones that you have problems with and you start, you know, Oh man, these people are nuts. And I'll give you a couple of quick examples. So this is, we own vacation rentals. Um, and recently have had a couple of pretty interesting, uh, requests and requirements. So we had a, a woman come or a, a group coming in and customer uh, or guest says, Hey, uh, my, my uh, kid is super sensitive to chemicals. Do you have, or, or do you use any sort of fragrance like plug in things? And if you, or, or scented candles. Okay. Easy answer. No, we don't in this particular property. Sure. We do not. She says, great. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and book the place. So uh, this day was uh, scheduled to start yesterday. And on Friday, we get an email from her says, okay, uh, we're coming on Sunday. Can you please remove all soaps and cleaners from the house? What? This, this is new. Be laundry detergents, uh, uh, countertop cleansers, anything like that. And, uh, uh, you know, so of course he quick is like, no, we, we, it's a big house and you just, there's just no way to go. Th I mean, you could, but it's just ridiculous. And I, I mentioned to my wife who runs this business, I said, you know, that's going to be a problem. <laughs> that's a problem customer right there. And so we said, hey, we're not sure we're able to do that. We don't, you know, it's, it happens to be in the middle of a blizzard up there, yada, yada. Um, we'd be happy to let you cancel if you'd like. Okay. Oh, well, that's actually very, um, would that, yeah. would canceling at that point in time be a normally allowed as part of your normal no. can't? Okay. No. So you were. We have a 60 day. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I figured. But, so, yeah. so you it was $5,000. It was, it was yeah. a $5,000 kit. But I said, you know. You're going to be dealing with this person uh, who I'm sure is a lovely woman and, uh, you know, whatever. I'm sure they are. And the kid I actually have compassion for those issues, of course. But I said they're they're introducing new requirements on you that they didn't talk about, you know, four months ago or six months ago yeah. when, they, when they booked the house. What that's else one. is going to come up? Yep. So, yeah. So but that's so the cynic I, we, in me talking. The that, what else is going to come correct. up? Me so, too. Okay. Me too. And I, I, I think we dodged a bullet, and they went ahead and canceled, which was smart, I think, mm. for everybody. Uh, we just said, hey, we don't have a good fit here. So the other one we had recently, we have another piece of property up in the mountains, and it's it's a fishing kind of cabiny kind of thing, and there happens to be some taxidermy on the wall, right? You okay. Know, we have sure. a couple of big deer and an elk uh, or an antelope, I think it is, because it just kind of lends it to, they were there when I bought the house and I'm like, oh, they look great. I'm going to leave it as people love the place. Kind of, kind of make, and it's we, part of the, 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 the yeah. rugged aesthetic. Yes. The ambiance, the experience, if yep. you will. And so, uh, uh, the, we get an inquiry and says, we want to come, we want to rent, want to rent your place for a week, but we'd like you to take all the taxidermy down. Be uh, our one of our kids <laughs> freaks out about it or whatever. Sure. And and again, I said no, <laughs> we can't do that. And not only can we not do it, you can't do it when you get there because it's just too complex and, right. and this kind of thing. Yeah. But a couple of quick examples of those are, and what I, the, it's very easy to become cynical about your customers, and that's a I think that's a problem that. You, you as a uh, maybe as a business owner are kind of more maybe more self aware, but I think it can quickly travel trickle down to your employees as well. And I'd like to, I'd love to talk about some strategies to avoid that cynicism uh, today on the show. All right, so there's been a lot of buzz around AI lately. We've been talking about it here on the show quite a bit, but maybe you're not sure how it fits into your daily life or your workflow. Well. Notion has just launched a new incredible tool, Notion AI, that's fully integrated into Notion, so it has the context of everything you're already working on. Notion is this cool thing. If you don't already know about it, you got to check it out. Shannon and I have started using it, you know, for a long time. We just used a single doc for our agendas, and it's fine, but, like, that starts to get unruly and unwieldy. Notion lets you combine your notes and your docs into one space that's super simple, beautifully designed, and now more powerful than ever, thanks to AI. Notion AI helps you work faster, write better, 
And think bigger doing tasks that normally take you hours in just seconds, right? Because that's what AI, as we've been talking about here on the show, that's what it's good for is giving you those thought starters. And now you get to have that happen with the context of the stuff that you already have in Notion. And it's across all your notes and docs without the need to jump between your work and a separate AI powered tool. Notion AI is designed to help you with your work right in the place where you're doing your work, not some separate AI tool you got to copy and paste. So it, whatever you're working on, Notion AI lets you skip to the good part, right? You can save time and write faster by letting Notion AI handle all the brainstorming in your first draft, or it can take your messy notes and turn them into something polished. It's amazing. For a limited time, you can try Notion AI for free when you go to notion.com slash businessbrain. That's all lowercase letters, notion.com slash business brain to try out the incredible power of Notion AI today. And when you use our link, you're supporting our show, right? This is a limited time offer, though. So try Notion AI for free right now at notion.com slash business brain. I think you're going to love this. And our thanks to Notion and Notion AI for sponsoring this episode. While we're here, I've got a show for you. Are you interested in growing your e-commerce store or perhaps even starting one? Well, then you should be listening to the award-winning top e-commerce podcast, E-Commerce Master Plan. Host and author of the best-selling book, E-Commerce Marketing, Chloe Thomas, has been in the e-commerce industry for nearly 20 years helping e-commerce entrepreneurs like you and like us to grow our business. Every week on the show, Chloe interviews a different e-commerce brand to explore how they are achieving their success. From startups to eight-figure brands, there's always something new to learn. You can listen now on your favorite podcast app. Just search for e-commerce master plan, or you can go to their website at ecommercemasterplan.com slash podcast. And our thanks to Chloe for doing this swap with us. So the trick here, Shannon, is we're going to be presented with these uh unreasonable requests uh yep and it is totally normal to respond uh with with by being flabbergasted and even irate right uh to, or to feel that emotion but feel that not yeah, to respond that not way. necessarily right. respond yeah. that way but to have that uh, at reaction uh and the trick as you astutely pointed out, is to not only temper that for yourself, but to make sure that you realize in those moments that you are training your employees what not only what to do, but what the culture of your company is. Exactly. I, I really it, like this yes. is a huge thing. It's a defining moment. And it can be so easy to just like get caught in a rant fest and yep. and i like like with this thing that happened uh for us last week it, it, now lisa on the team at backbeat also happens to be my wife so uh, instead of getting on a, a you know a zoom call with her from the office i just walked across the driveway and we chatted it out i'm like what is the what's the, like i i started by adding a little fuel to the fire i said what's the matter with these people like they like this is insane okay all right well obviously they're a good customer of ours they made a mistake we need to massage this a little bit. So, you know, we, right. like I said, we sent them a note and said, Hey, we're, you know, it's already been recorded. We can change it on the website, but uh, it can't be changed in the audio. We don't want to ask the host to change it because we don't want to train the host not to be proactive about this. Like this wasn't just, there was a mistake we made. Can the host, you know, fix it? It was, there was a mistake made. The host caught it and told yeah, us yeah. about it. And now you want the host to pay for that by, by doing a free spot or something. It's like, wow, that's, that's a lot to ask for. So we told them, we don't really think that we want the host in that position. We told the, the sponsor this, like, you know, and they, they pushed it. They're like, well, is there anything else we can do? We just, are, we're worried about the tracking or this, that, and the other thing. And so at this point, you know, we had said our piece in a productive way. Uh, right. And then we engaged the host on this. And and at this point, it was great because Lisa took it. Now, I mean, to say that Lisa's an employee of the business might be technically correct, but she clearly 
also has a very vested interest in the business itself, right? I mean, like, you right. Know, sure, she, of course. She, right. Like, I mean, she is actually a, a named partner in the business. It's right. not, you know, so, but, you know, it was like, th- this, this is how I approach these things always when they happen is I try to get it so that the, yes, we acknowledge the insanity of the request and then let's see if we can find the customer service angle here. And so with yeah, that, yep. she went to the, the, the host and said, look, I have to present this to you because they're asking, but please know that we really appreciate what you did and we don't want to punish you for it. And this is a host that we have a long standing relationship with. They've been with us for probably a decade. You know, I mean, it, like they know us, they know that we don't, we, they know that we go to, go to bat for them and uh, said, look, they wanted to make good. We told them that wasn't going to happen. They are asking for something else, maybe a mention in a future episode. And he said, you know what? I still have time in my day. I can go and like edit the, I can re-record that one little bit of audio and just drop it in and edit it into the show and re-upload it. It's like, it's not a big deal. We're like, are you sure? He's like, of course, customer service. Great. So it's this ability to train, like, I mean, in this case, not just Lisa, who really does sort of get the customer service thing, but also our host, like, okay, yep, there's, there's value here. We've pushed back where we can push back. And now we're doing a good thing for this customer that's going to be happy with us and, and has brought us a lot of business in the past and will continue to bring us business in the future. But everything yeah. is a customer service moment. That's right. And I, and I think the key is, it's how you frame it, whether mm-hmm. you're talking to the customer, of course, and we've done a ton of shows all about customer service and the two oh, tokens yeah. and trying to get on the same side of the table, all this kind of stuff. Uh, and, but equally important, maybe even more so for the long-term success of your business is how you, your team handles it, your employees and if you set the tone of this, you know, cynical, uh, making fun, ranting about customers, that kind of stuff, they're going to pick up on that right yep. away and they will do it too. Now, a little bit of it is fine. It's kind of cathartic. You have you can, to, I you, feel like you have to, it, it's, it's, it's really your concept of pacing and then leading. It's yeah. the, the, you, the ranting yes. is the pacing part of it, right? right? Where you're yeah. all on you the get same them going, page. But then, right. yeah, then you have to lead them into something like that. That's positive, right? That you can have this, uh, you have this discussion, you've kind of let the air out of the situation. So they're not all, you know, your, your yeah. customer service people or whoever your salespeople, they're not all, you know, twisted out of shape. Well, they got to know that and, you have their back too. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And then you kind of lead them into, Oh, you know, you know, what's great. Uh, I always used to say, you know, what's so great. It's like 98% of our customers don't do this. And it's always trying to re- re- end on a, a reminder of how good m- the vast majority of your customers or clients are. And how if you had this kind of problem like this over and over and over and over and over, well, actually, I would point out that maybe it's on your end that's causing it, right? Yes. You could look at, is this a systemic issue? Yeah. How are we inviting this in, right? Yeah. 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 But, but, you know, these one-offs when they happen, you you could laugh about them and, but you need to be, you know, self-aware that how you talk about them in the office online and in Slack, whatever messaging thing you're, you're talking about, it has a long-term impact and it will impact how they, how your people treat future customers. Oh, so well, a hundred, you are training them. Everybody yes, is being trained yes. at every moment. Yep. Yep. No, it's great. Yeah, so, I, I am curious about your, when I saw the, the pictures of your, your place with the taxidermy and all that, my first thought was, I wonder how many people are going to choose not to rent this place because of that. Yeah, I actually question. had that thought. Like, but yeah, but like it's a different. It's a certain clientele. It, but like to me, those people would just choose not. I mean, I've chosen not to rent Airbnbs because yeah. I see, you know, the their their living room is like cluttered and has the god ugly wallpaper or whatever. And it's like, you know, I'm gonna sure. be there for a week. I, like, is there a better place? Like that? It's I'm not gonna feel like I'm being attacked visually every time I walk yeah. in. It has nothing to do with taxidermy. It's just. You know, ugly wallpaper I, right. or clutter. Like, why is all your crap there? Like, I, you know, this is a rental. So yep. I, I totally like, but I just don't rent those places. I, I would never have thought to ask somebody, hey, 
Can you like remove all your books from the place? Uh, I can tell you a story. I, I, I would, maybe there's a whole nother episode of this, but <laughs> ever since COVID, the customer uh, expectations have changed. Interesting. And, yeah. And there is an expectation that uh, I want to stay here. So you should do these things for me versus, oh, I would like to stay here, but their requirements don't meet my needs. So yeah. I'll just go find another place. The space so doesn't it, fit for me. It's yeah, fine. Fit, the yeah. policies don't work. Right. Uh, and, but it, it, that has definitely switched. And I don't know why, but it, it, it may I, yeah, be worth a I, future I do a discussion. Lot of, I do a lot of Airbnb and yeah. I, yeah. I have not, and I continued to do it through COVID. In fact, it was a very nice way to sort of get away it was, you know, if I know that my family, like we all decided, we're like, well, uh, we're going to spend every night sitting on the couch watching TV or playing games, you know, because what else are we going to do? Yeah, uh, that's right. And so let's go rent an Airbnb for a week over there somewhere else and do it there yeah. and make it a little different. You know, it was a way to mix things up. But I ne like never have I thought of asking someone to change their place. There was the one I, like the only thing was recently in when we were in Italy, we rented an Airbnb and a big part of what we were going to do there was hanging out with my daughter and her boyfriend. And I wanted to make sure that the place had a living room where we could just be for, you sure. know, hours on yeah. end. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And there were two different pictures of the living room with very different setups in terms of like the mm. couches and chairs. And so I was like, okay, which is it? And they're like, yeah, right, yeah. it's this one. It's, you know, what you're seeing in the other picture is an early thing. We added a new uh, deal and yacht. I'm like, perfect. Sold. Yeah. But it, like, I wasn't going to ask him. It was just going to not choose the place if it didn't yep. suit me. I don't know, man. It's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It, it's it's interesting. And, and I mean, I do it, you know, if I go to even with a hotel, yes. you, oh, I don't like to where this is the view, whatever, right. or this or that. I mean, that, and that's, that's what, that's, I think what, what uh, people should do. I think. My my last comment on this is it's another great example why as business owners you need to have peers, other people that are in business that own small businesses or companies that you can talk with, whether yes. it's an online group, whether it's whatever, because you want to definitely let the steam out about this stuff that probably drives you crazy. But you you need you know maybe you can't do that with your employees because you don't want to you know set I'm gonna, the I'm going to float an like idea. That. I like this, this concept of having a, a vent session uh, for yeah. us small business owners. What if we hosted a, a Zoom hangout uh, one day Yeah, it, where where you just come and, and vent and, and we won't record it. Uh, the only people that will hear it are the people that are there. You know what I mean? I great like, idea. Yeah. All right. Well, let us know what you think about that. Feedback at businessbrain.show. Uh, and if we get, you know, I mean, I only need like a few of you. So if, if you think you're in the minority and most people aren't going to want to do this, it, send us a note anyway, because yeah. you might be the, the, the one that tips us over the edge to actually do this. Because Shannon and I do this already. We just call it pre-show or post-show. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Pre-show today actually became the show because we felt like we could do it in an appropriate way. But uh, yeah, if you want to have a vent session with us, let us know. Feedback at businessbrain.show. We'd... Uh, we would love to do event session with you. Trust me on that. So thanks for hanging out with us, folks. Make sure to check out Notion at notion.com slash business brain. Uh, send us that, that note at feedback at businessbrain.show and keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next time. <laughs>